Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. On the front of your bulletins, you have a picture of an ancient ruin. It is a ancient ruin of a temple or a synagogue back then. And you see above that there is a name of a town. And if you've never seen that synagogue before, it might look to you like Capernaum. Or just Capernaum. Capernaum is a town on the shores of the Sea of Galilee where Jesus spent quite a bit of time. He performed quite a few miracles as well. Today and next week, we will look at some of the miracles that he performed in that town. And today, he will be in this synagogue, the ruins of which still stand. The background for our worship is the Lord is our shepherd and we are his sheep. That's why on page 1, officially of your bulletin, we will sing together the Lord's my shepherd on pages 1 and 2.
brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. We sing together Psalm 23, a famous psalm because it talks about Jesus as our shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first of three readings from the Bible this morning is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 18. Moses is speaking to the nation of Israel here. And Moses reminds them about what is coming. A prophet, just like Moses, will be raised up in future years. And that prophet, of course, is going to be Jesus. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own brothers. You must listen to him. For this is what you asked of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let us not hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire anymore, or we will die. The Lord said to me, What they say is good. I will raise up for them a prophet like you among their brothers. I will put my words in his mouth. And he will tell them everything I command him. If anyone does not listen to my words that the prophet speaks in my name, I myself will call him to account. But a prophet who presumes to speak in my name anything I have not commanded him to say, or a prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, must be put to death. This is the word of our Lord. This next section is one of the best sections in any worship service. Sin and forgiveness section. We have a chance to confess our sins to our Lord and hear His pure and true announcement of forgiveness. My people have been lost sheep, God said through Jeremiah. They wandered over mountain and hill and forgot their own resting place, for they sinned against the Lord, their true pasture. May my petition come before you. Deliver me according to your promise. I have strayed like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I have not forgotten your commands. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. But the Lord has laid on Jesus the guilt of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. Hear us, O shepherd of Israel, awaken your might, come and save us. I am the good shepherd, Jesus says. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of the sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice. And there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. Praise be to the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The 
The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. My heart leaps for joy, and I will give thanks to him in song. The Lord is the strength of his people, a fortress of salvation for his anointed one. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Be our shepherd and carry us forever. Amen. Second scripture reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 3, picking up on this thought that Moses brought up about the next prophet. Well, Jesus is the ultimate prophet who speaks the words of the Lord, and we are to listen to him. Therefore, holy brothers who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus, the apostle and high priest whom we confess. He was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses was faithful in all of God's house. Jesus has been found worthy of greater honor than Moses, just as the builder of the house has greater honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but God is the builder of everything. Moses was faithful as a servant in all God's house, testifying to what would be said in the future. But Christ is faithful as a son over God's house, and we are his house, if we hold on to our courage and the hope which we boast. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand out of respect for the reading of the gospel. Here in Mark chapter 1, Jesus does speak, and people do listen, just like we are supposed to today. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching, because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then a man in their synagogue, who was possessed by an evil spirit, cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The evil spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching and with authority. He even gives orders to evil spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of God. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. And I'll sing together about the word of God that Jesus spoke by singing this text to him entitled, Word of God, page 8.
grace to you, peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. They have heard no one like him before. He was only 30 years old, but he was wise well beyond his years. He was a carpenter's son and yet a scholar. He lived in the region of Galilee, and yet people from the capital city of Jerusalem always came up to seek him. He was not trained in the traditional methods of religious instruction of the Hebrew nation, and yet he did not hesitate to call out the Jewish religious leaders either, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, the elders of the people, and anyone else who dared to contradict the word of God. He was a man who performed incredible miracles and yet didn't want the spotlight. He was a man who commanded attention and yet didn't want the popularity. He was a man who drew massive crowds whenever he preached and whatever he taught and wherever he went. And yet he didn't want the fame. He talked with a confidence that was contagious. He carried himself with a poise that was unshakable. And he talked with an air of authority that seemed to come from God himself. And so when he spoke, people listened. No one had heard anything like Jesus Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. And Jesus preached, and he taught, and he spoke with an authority that the teachers of the law did not have. The teachers of the law were the rabbis at the time. The supposed theologians of the people who really rely on the traditions and the made up laws of their ancestors. They dealt with the gray areas of rules and regulations and stipulations handed down to them over the centuries. And of course, the problem was these rules and these stipulations and these regulations had all kinds of different interpretations and opinions. And so there are arguments and debates on how to apply these laws to the Israelite nation. These rabbis pretended to know what they were talking about. And they loved the attention they got from their titles, but when it came right down to it, they were simply imposing procedures and policies on the people that were dragging them away from their Lord. And then this guy named Jesus came out to the scene. And when he spoke, the people listened. Because his message was not about personal interpretation and individual opinions. He spoke the truth based on God's word. He spoke about past events and future promises that were 100% true. He spoke with the backing of God the Father who had sent him to this earth to save the people of this world. Jesus spoke with an authority that people could not help but listen to. Even evil spirits had to obey his voice. Whenever Jesus came across evil spirits in the pages of the Bible, those confrontations were brief. The evil spirits sometimes said things. They admitted who Jesus was. Sometimes they even asked a couple questions. But Jesus was not interested in having a discussion with corrupt angels who had been kicked out of heaven so long before. Jesus did not want to bother with the evil and wicked schemes that they had for the people that Jesus had come to save. And so even if those evil spirits did speak, Jesus did not let them speak for long. Here's what happened that day in the synagogue when Jesus was preaching in Capernaum. 
Just then a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The evil spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching and with authority. He even gives orders to evil spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. Jesus certainly was the Holy One of God, like this evil spirit has said. But Jesus did not want to be associated with anything so wicked, and so he immediately distanced himself from this sin-fueled evil spirit, and he says, Be quiet. And the demon shut up. And then Jesus commanded, Come out of him. And the demon complied. He shook the man violently, and he released the man finally with a defiant shriek, but this evil spirit had no choice but to obey the words of the Lord. When Jesus spoke, it listened. And the people noticed. They were so amazed at what had happened right in front of their eyes, they said to one another, What is this? A new teaching and with authority, he gives orders to evil spirits, and they listened to him. Jesus' words had power. His voice commanded respect. When he spoke, demons listened. When he spoke, entire crowds of people listened. When Jesus spoke, everyone listened. Except for us. We do not always listen when Jesus speaks. We pretend that we listen. We like to think that we listen. But come on. For all friends here, I think we can probably let them admit that we do not always listen when Jesus speaks. In fact, we have developed a very nasty habit of ignoring a lot of what Jesus says. Think of how many teachings in the Bible that we quickly and purposely push out of our mind whenever they come up. Jesus speaks, for example. And he says that the reading and the study and the worship of God's word should envelop our entire lives. Oh, but, but that is not very convenient with the schedule that we want to keep. And so we just ignore those words and go on living our lives like we normally do. Jesus speaks. And he says that whatever you do, Whenever you will come across anyone, you should treat them with a self-sacrificing kind of love, whether you like them or not. But that's going to take a lot of work and effort and time, and it's certainly not going to be any fun. And so we don't pay attention to those words either, and we pretend that they don't even exist. Jesus speaks, and he says... You should never hold a grudge against anyone, but forgive everyone immediately for everything, every time, every day. Jesus speaks and he says, you should be generous with whatever you have and never grieve. Jesus speaks and he says, your faith in him should be on display in your life in whatever you do and whatever you say every single second. Jesus speaks and he says a whole lot of things. But the instructions and the commands that he gives us usually run contrary to what we naturally think and how we instinctively feel as we block those words from our minds so that they don't seep down into our hearts and make us feel guilty when we don't want to do that. How many times have you ignored God's words because you just didn't want to listen? Typically, when someone ignores the words of those in authority, there are consequences. If a state trooper tells you to pull to the side of the road and you don't listen, there will be consequences. 
If the IRS demands that you pay a fine or taxes that are past due and you don't listen, there will be consequences. Kids, if your parents tell you to pick something up and you don't listen, there should be consequences. And so if Jesus, the one who says all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, if someone like that speaks and we don't listen, shouldn't there be consequences? Oh, there are consequences. Serious consequences. Eternal consequences. If you purposely ignore the words of the one who has authority over this entire universe, if you blatantly disregard specific instructions from the one who controls all things of all time. Of course there are consequences. That's what the cross is for. The cross is the consequence. The cross is the scene of the most horrible death penalty ever concocted. A punishment that not only consisted of thorns and nails, but a punishment that was of God's wrath over sin of all time for an eternity. And of course it wasn't you hanging up there, bleeding profusely, in extreme agony, unthinkable pain, and abandoned by your father so that you had to undergo the horrors of hell all alone. It was Jesus up there. He took the consequences. He took the penalty and the pain and the punishment in your place. And he did not do it begrudgingly. He did not do it with a bitter heart. He was not complaining while he hung on that cross. But he did speak. When Jesus was hanging on that cross, he spoke. And he said, Father, forgive them. Jesus did speak and he said, Today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus did speak, and he said, it is finished. And when Jesus spoke those words, they were right, and they were true, and they were undeniable, because he not only had the authority to speak those words, he had the authority to make them be so. And he still speaks to you with that same kind of authority right now. When Jesus speaks to you through the written words of the Bible, he says things like this. Because I will, you also will. Jesus speaks to you, and he says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. Jesus speaks to you. And he says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come for you. Jesus speaks to you when he says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And all of those words that Jesus speaks come from only one chapter of one book of the Bible. All those words were, were from John chapter 14. How many more words do you think Jesus speaks to you through the rest of the Bible? How many more times does he address your struggles and your problems, your ups and your downs, your life here and your life there? Jesus speaks, and he speaks with confidence and boldness and conviction and passion and authority. And he speaks directly to you. Are you listening? I'm aware that it is difficult to listen to the words of Jesus sometimes. It's hard to listen to a sermon, isn't it? So many distractions in here, distractions at home, that's hard to pay attention. It's difficult to listen to Jesus in a Bible study because it takes some focused concentration. It's difficult to listen to the words of Jesus when you're reading your own Bible because that can become a mindless exercise very quickly. Then even when you are listening to the words of Jesus, sometimes those words are hard to accept. 
Some of his proclamations are so grand. And some of his declarations are so beyond this world that sometimes you wonder if they really can be true. I get it. I understand that it's difficult to listen to the words of your Savior, but there is nothing more important in your life, nothing more important in your life than to listen to what Jesus speaks. Listen. Jesus speaks to you. And he says, I forgive you. For anything and everything. For what you remember and what you have long forgotten. For that which still bothers you and that which is still to come. I really have forgiven you immediately and completely and forever. Listen. Jesus speaks to you. And he says, I am with you every step of the way. Every moment of every day. I am watching over every aspect of your life, now and into eternity. Whether you're awake or asleep, in the middle of the night or the middle of the day, you have nothing to worry about because I am right here. Listen. Jesus speaks to you. And he says, you are mine. I not only handcrafted you, but I call you by your name. I have known you long before you knew me. You are special to me. Precious and priceless. So much so that I do not want to spend an eternity in heaven without you. So I will be back. And I will take you home. Listen. Jesus speaks to you. When Jesus speaks, it's not a guess. It is not only a possibility. It is not simply nice words to make you feel better. When Jesus speaks, it is always true and always right and it never fails. Because Jesus speaks with the authority of the one who created all things, preserves all things, and controls all things. Listen. Jesus speaks. He speaks with authority. Speaks with love. And he speaks to you. Amen. You'll notice in your bulletins that we have a section for offering. That is just a reminder, since we are not passing offering days. Please remember to do that not only for the sake of our congregation and what we do to share God's word with as many people as possible but also as a personal way that you worship your Lord, thanking Him and praising Him for what He does for you. In your bulletins, after the offering, you see that we have a hymn, a famous hymn, a hymn that we normally associate with children, but of course we are the children of God. So we get to sing it together. I am Jesus' little lamb printed for you on page 10.
February comes Lent. Lent is that time of year, about a month and a half leading up to Easter, as we get a chance to really focus intently on the suffering and death of our Lord, which of course is the whole reason we came to this earth in the first place. I hope you can join us for those midweek worship services. Those are going to be starting on February 17th. That Wednesday at 6, right here. Always a great time of year. Always nice to join together midweek and focus on the one thing that we really get to focus on, and that is Jesus' substitution for us. We have an open forum today. An open forum is a quarterly meeting, but it will be brief. That is for anyone and everyone who's interested in what we do at Living Word as a congregation and how we're moving forward. You can see the topics up for discussion on page 15 of your bulletins as we look forward to doing a variety of different things in the next few months and years. So please join us for that. It will be after a very short Bible study right after this. Anything up for you today that we should know? Have a great rest of your day. Fool around for a little bit, come back, and then come back in for your Bible study, Kids for Bible Roots.